Alright, here we are back at it again with another update to our Zombief game. Now, as I mentioned in the comments of the previous video, I do plan on putting ads into this game and using that revenue to sponsor the channel, kind of alleviate some of the stress I have working two other full-time jobs. So, uh, I'd like to get rid of one of those, be able to have more time to do YouTube. I haven't been doing enough 3D printing lately. I know I get comments like that a lot. I try to stay on top of Kira at least, but there are other things that I do to unwind when I'm a little bit stressed out and programming is one of them. So I like to have a little bit of fun. And you can see this about screen here. You didn't actually see that when I hit play before. So just a simple little nod here to show you. Uh, so um, this is a canvas panel. It's got some game items on it and it is made to appear and disappear with the click of a button. So uh, I did that with Unity and C Sharp. It was great and it works pretty well. If you'd like to see how to do that, that's what this video is about. We're gonna show you how to turn canvas items on and off with the click of a button. And I'm gonna show you my code here for doing just that. So let's see, we're gonna zoom out. Let's go ahead and get our canvas into focus here, okay? Uh, and this is our panel as you can see in the preview mode it is visible if I want to see what's underneath it in preview mode I can go ahead and grab the about panel right here and I can click the checkbox and it'll go away however if I do that it won't come back when I turn the game on and that's not what I want so um, you can leave it there and you disable it while you're editing the things that are going to be behind it or if it's in the way of your game mode and then make sure you re-enable it before you actually hit play mode um, that is not how you make it appear and disappear with the button. That's just an easy way to work around it. So let's go ahead down here. I have a class somewhere. That is my menu class. There we go, main menu. And as you can see, I have a public game object, ab pan. That's my about panel. Okay. And I set it to public. So as always with the editor, I could drag and drop the actual item into it in Unity. And then I have this right here, which is going to set active. Uh, this is a method on that panel. And I'm gonna set it to false, because that'll make it disappear. Then when I'm ready, down here on the launch button, this is the method I call with my button. And I'll show you that in just a second, how it's all sewn up. But you can see it says, if the panel is active, if it equals true, then set it to false. Else, the only other option is that it's already false. And in that case, we wanna set it to true. And this way, one button will do two different things and let's go ahead and show you how that works so I have the about panel here but I also have the about button and this is my actual button we can zoom in on it you can see it here and if I scroll down in the property manager here you can see let's go ahead you can see that it gives me an on click method now I added an on click by hitting add to list then what you need to do is you need to go in here and you need to make sure that you select your item with the script on it. Now, it is easier to come in, say I made a, an empty object for my menu, okay? I attach my main menu script to that. Then I can simply click in the scene and select menu. And then it gives me an option of all the things attached to it. I can either affect menu's game object, its transform, or the scripts attached to it. I have a main menu script attached, and I want to use the launch about method. So that's basically the gist of it. All of that together gives you this cute little pop-up. Uh, works great for things like showing a game over scene. And we're actually going to use this same information to incorporate a round over pop-up when you pass a round so that people notice that a round has been completed. So in order to do that, let's go ahead and close this up. We need to go into our game scene here. So let's go to File, Open Recent Scene, Main. We are gonna save our changes because we've made a few. And you can see in here I have all of my stuff set up. This is my canvas for the main game. And there's lots of items in here. There's a main panel, of course. We're gonna go ahead and add in another panel. So we're gonna to go to UI and panel, and we're gonna adjust the size of this. Oh, we need to select the right button to do that. We're gonna adjust the size of this. 
and then we're going to move it over here. An important thing to do when working with UI pieces is to make sure that you have your anchor sent properly. I want to make sure that this always shows up in the middle of my scene, regardless of how big the screen is. So I'm going to leave it on center here. But I don't want it to stretch. I want it to stay a standard pixel size with the rest of the canvas. So let's go ahead and take our panel and add a Text Mesh Pro object to it. So UI Text Mesh Pro. We're going to change our text here. Maybe. Uh, or not. Let's see. What is the deal here? Selecting it and selecting it again, and it's not letting me change it. What the heck? Okay, well, let's try this. We'll change the font first. Zoom in. Hmm. Don't understand what the issue seems to be here. Let's center the text. Oh, I'm in play mode. No, I wasn't in play mode. Um, let's see. Well, that was a ridiculous little bug. So what, what happened, uh, what I had to do to fix that, not being able to click on this here, was move the game out into its own window and then click on it. And then after having done that, it's now allowing me to type. So make this a little wider, get it centered up, center the text again, change the font again, and let's uh, Let's make it bigger here. And adjust the panel size. In fact, let's get rid of the panel altogether. And in this case, we'll just use the text mesh objects so no I don't want to do that I liked it better with the panel behind it make it the same size as the panel Right there, take the panel, move it back to the middle, and let's change the color. To this orangish color. Close that. Oh wait, wait, wait. We actually we're gonna increase the alpha here. What about green? No. Dark green is good. I kind of like that. Let's go with that. All right. So the next thing we need to do in order to be able to access this and turn it off and on as the game is playing is to add its own tag. So we're going to go to tag, add, and our new tag is going to be winner. And we're going to grab that and tag it with winner. And we need to go and do some scripting here. So what we're going to do is go into our scripts. Um, this is going to be shown from our game manager. So we can actually do 
the same thing we did here. So let's make sure we grab this right. Um, on the main menu. Public game object, set false. So, public game object, winner. Okay, and then... Just like in the other one, set active, false, okay. We're gonna add in a counter so it only shows this for about 10 seconds. And we're gonna add in a Boolean for whether or not it's showing. Show win equals false because it's false. Then we are going to go to where we call start next level and update. So if enemies, okay, start next level and then show win equals true. And... That, I don't know. Um, we need to do the opposite of what we did up there. So, winner dot set active true semicolon. All right. So, this will turn it on and make it show. Since we're not using a button, we need something to make it go away, and that's what our timer's for. So, underneath this, we're going to say if show win. And win count minus minus if win count less than equal to zero. Winner dot set active false and Show win equals false. And then lastly, we need to make win count equal 10 again so that we have a counter for next time. So let's hit save. And we'll try this out, see if it shows our pop up when we beat a level now. Let's drag this over here so we can see what's going on. Obviously, we've hit an error. So what do we do? It's incrementing constantly. Ah, uh, okay, I see a little bit of what's wrong here. Let's go ahead and adjust this. I got a parenthesis in the wrong spot here. Let's see if that helps our situation at all. Still incrementing. That may be. Let's see here. Let's try this. Let's go to. Oh, you know what? We also didn't uh, didn't bring this panel into our game manager. There we go. 
Try one more time here. I think there's still another error. It shouldn't be incrementing up non-stop like that. Okay, we seem to be okay. So let's beat around and see if our pop-up shows up. beat the round and our pop-up did not show so we need to go in here and make sure we're setting it to true somewhere it is getting set to true if showing win count minus minus, that's right. If win count is less than or equal to zero, winner set active false. Showing equals false, win count equals 10. So this won't go off unless that has gone off, and that won't go off unless showing equals true, which we're setting here if our enemies are less than zero and winner set actives. Let's see if we're not showing for enough time here. Because that's not 10 seconds, it's 10 ticks of the game clock. And if it's moving fast enough, you won't even see. So we'll try again here real quick. Four cows left in this level, in theory. I see nothing moving. There we go. <laughs> Definitely need to bring that spawn distance in a little bit, huh? Here, cow, 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 cow. All right, where's the last cow? Hey, there it is, it popped up, disappeared. We're on round two, we got more cows incoming. So everything is working pretty well. Now, keep in mind as you're seeing me edit this game that I'm editing a lot of the code and I'm putting in what are called placeholder graphics. I'm not going to be using a lot of these graphics in the permanent version of the game. Just kind of get a beta idea of what's going on. And then after all of the code is in place, I'll go back and I'll make everything a lot prettier. It's just functionality is more important than looks pretty much in every case. So um, that's going to be it for this video, guys. I hope that was helpful for you. Now you know how to show up something on the canvas and then make it disappear after a little bit of time. And you also know how to do that with a button click. I hope you find this useful. and We will see you in the next one.